Goals, Denise, and exploit Jacob Polly. His is a voice that we don't often hear. It's a voice from Cumbria. It's a voice from Carlisle. Jacob now lives the other side of the north in Whitley Bay. And there's some of Whitley Bay now creeping into his work. The book's called Jack Self, and it's built from old spells and children's rhymes and half-remembered folk tales and riddles and many, many, many jacks, lots of jacks in here. I was disappointed not to see my Uncle Jack in here, who was a fisherman, liked to go fishing with my dad, and Uncle Jack wore the most obvious false teeth you've ever seen, like a pub piano, and he would always, halfway through a barren spell of fishing with him and my dad, would take his false teeth out and rattle them next to water, and it always attracted the fish. And I think, that's what Jacob does. That's what his jacks do. Jacob, not literally, takes out the false teeth of poetry, which are really real teeth, of course, and rattles them by the water of inspiration. And fish come to the surface. They really do. And all the fish are called Jack, like everybody in this book. Jacob Polly. Thank you. Um, the book is um, a, a story sequence, um, really, that features a character called Jack Self and his mother, Mudder, and his father, Muggins Here, and his friend, Jeremy Wren, and the place that Jack Self lives, Lamanby. Um, and this is a, a kind of, the book runs from before his birth and on. So I'll read um, his kind of annunciation poem, the poem that announces Jack Self's arrival. And it's so lovely to be here and such a, an honor, as everyone says, but such a joy as well. Every creeping thing by leech, by water might, by the snail on its slick of light, by the mercury wires of the spider's lyres in the great sound hall of the night, by the wet socket of a levered stone, by a dog-licked ice cream cone, by spores, mildew, by the green achoo, by the yellow split pea and the bacon bone. All the doors must have their way, and every break of day, it's day. Instead of a soul, Jack's self has a coal and the high fireman to pay. By head lice powder, paraquat, snapdragon snap, and rat tap tap. Who's at the door of the door of the door? It's Jack Self in his toad skin hat. Peewit. A peewit is a, a, a lapwing, um, a, a bird, and in this poem, uh, Jack Self kind of, kind of becomes um, a lapwing in a, in a kind of northern English um, shamanic manner. Peewit. A little one, drab, barely skyborn, with nothing of the gut-unraveling acumen of the scavenger. This is Jack's self, 
limping across marshland, making a decoy of himself, piping up when the day goes dim, so close to the ground, he's almost it. Small wonder, Peewit is the name the other boys have given him, not Jackdaw, not Rook. The gods of Bracken and fly-tipped black plastic sacks will expose themselves to the pilgrim who has faith in the star at the center of the crabapple, in the ditchful of frog spawn and the shed door hinged with spider's webs. So it comes to pass for Peewit, whippy stick in his right hand. As he tramps the far out lanes with those who had diminished him, a breeze starts to ratch in the dust. The foxglove jangles, his legs break and he goes down, his eyes a white flutter in his head. The boys circle him where he fits, grinding his teeth so hard they sing. And when they heft him, heavier than he should be, his bird soul batters into him. They process so slowly, the lights all gone by halfway home, when Peewits, no longer between them, has flown. And blank with terror, the boys go round and round in the dark and cold, and are not ever found. Funny Ian should mention fishing, because um, I'm going to read a, 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 a fishing poem, a poem about fishing. Because, you know, there aren't enough of them, are there? I mean, I don't know. Maybe there are. Um, this is a poem called Night Lines. Um, night lines are fishing lines laid at night <laughs> and left. Uh, there's, some, there's some technical fishing vocabulary in this poem. Not much, but um, it mentions a priest, which is a thing that I'm afraid to say you bash a fish with. And this features Jeremy Wren, Jack Self's friend, and Wren in the poem um, suggests that he's related to the great Christopher Wren, the architect. Night lines. Jack Self and Jeremy Wren are setting night lines. In the kidney-coloured pool, all the streams of England run into. Jack Self's fretting. All night the guiled will hang, their hooked lips mouthing into the waterworks and bloodstreams of all England. All night, gaffed, their bullion flexing, until... Jeremy Wren bashes them at dawn with his hardwood priest. Wren, who says his granddad built the southern domes Jesus needed to stable his beasts, thinks Jack Self's a soft lad, a quick tear, a worry wit, and ties off another triple barbed spinner. So Jack Self rolls up his jeans, takes one end of the nylon line looped to a tent peg and wades into the chuckling shallows. Slippery stoned, ice cool fish path where no one has stood for a thousand years. When Wren's not looking, 
Jack's self stamps his foot and all the carp and sticklebacks, the perch and pike and bream are shaken out of their gullible, muddy-minded dream. Thank you.